Hello and welcome to Biostat Squid. In this video, I will give you an overview of gene set enrichment analysis and how to use it to summarize your differential gene expression results. Let's dive in. In my previous video, we talked about pathway enrichment analysis and how it can be used to summarize long lists of differentially expressed genes into shorter lists of biological pathways. I will give you a super quick recap, but if you're not familiar with pathway enrichment analysis, I suggest you check my other video first. So as we saw, pathway enrichment analysis methods take a list of differentially expressed genes as input and identify the sets, the gene sets, in which the differentially expressed genes are overrepresented or underrepresented. So you're basically summarizing long lists of genes into shorter lists of pathways. And the significance of each pathway is measured by calculating the probability that the observed number of differentially expressed genes in a given pathway are simply observed by chance. So lower p-values mean that the pathway is actually overrepresented and it was not just by chance. So this is what we were talking about in my previous video and uh, these approaches are known as overrepresentation analysis. But the problem of overrepresentation analysis methods is that we first need to select differentially expressed genes. So traditionally, we use thresholds of fold change uh, bigger than uh, 2 or smaller than minus 2 and p-values lower than 0 0.05. But what if a gene had a fold change of 1.99 and a p-value of 0 0.051? They're, they're still important genes to consider, and by removing them, they can modify the results for overrepresentation analysis a lot. And this is especially bad if you have few differentially expressed genes to start with. So the main issue with overrepresentation analysis methods is that the results depend a lot on our criteria. So to solve this problem, a second generation of methods was designed. These are called functional class scoring methods. Now, how did they eliminate this dependency on gene selection criteria? Basically, by taking all genes into consideration. But they do it smartly because they're not only looking for significant changes in sets of functionally related genes, but also genes with large expression changes. We'll go a bit more into that in just a sec. So one of the most popular approaches is gene set enrichment analysis, or GSEA, which is the method we're going to focus on today. So let's see how it works. The steps are very similar to overrepresentation analysis methods, actually. The big difference is that the input is not a list of genes, but a ranked list of genes. Now, ranking basically means that the genes are ranked by some score. So a common way of ranking genes is by level of differential expression. The p-values tell us how significant the change is. The log two-fold change tells us the direction and strength of the change, basically if the genes are upregulated or downregulated. So we can combine both to get a ranked list of genes which orders them both by significance, but also by the direction of change. So at the top of the list, you'll have the most upregulated and significant genes, and at the bottom of the list, the most downregulated significant genes. So this ranked list of genes is our input. And then the gene set enrichment analysis algorithm basically checks how the genes for a specific gene set are distributed in your list. So it checks whether the members of a gene set or a pathway tend to occur towards the top or the bottom of the list. So let's go back to our example. If you remember, we were comparing the gene expression in alcoholic liver disease versus healthy cells. And these are our results from differential gene expression analysis, and we then obtain our ranked gene list. Now, let's take the gene set involved in interleukin-6 production. 
there are 181 genes involved in IL-6 production and to check if IL-6 production is overrepresented in our list of genes, we basically check how uh, these genes are distributed in our ranked list. So IL-6 production might look like this. Most genes uh, involved in IL-6 production are found at the top of the list, since most genes involved in IL-6 production pathway were upregulated in our data set. Remember that our ranked list means upregulated significant genes are at the top. So upregulated pathways will have most of their genes towards the top. And of course, the opposite will happen for downregulated pathways. For example, Genes involved in cellular division, which we found to be downregulated in alcoholic liver versus healthy cells, will mostly be at the bottom of the list. Pathways that are not overrepresented, for example, uh, genes involved in heart contraction, will look like this. They are evenly distributed uh, in our list, or even mostly towards the center where non significant genes are. Now, obviously, we need a proper statistical test to identify which pathways show a non-random distribution across this uh, sorted list. And the most often used is the kolmogorov smirno test. I hope you excuse my pronunciation. But anyway, the result is basically the same as with overrepresentation analysis. We will obtain a p-value, which we need to correct for multiple testing, of course, since we are repeatedly testing thousands of gene ontology terms or thousands of pathways. And this way, we are able to reduce our long list of genes into a more manageable list of biological pathways. So as you can see, gene set enrichment analysis has the advantage that you don't filter out uh, your genes prior to the analysis. And also it takes into account how significant the changes are and in which direction they occur. So just to wrap up, um, there is a new generation of pathway enrichment analysis tools. So there are topology based methods which also take into account dependencies and interactions between genes. So it's, it's really cool, but that is a story for another video. So woohoo, you made it till the end, uh, squid-tastic. In my next video, I will explain how to interpret uh, GSE8 statistics and the plots you obtain. I hope this video gave you a clear overview of GSEA and how it works. If you like this video, please let me know and also let me know which other topics you'd like to cover next. Have a great day and see you in the next one.